let's take a look at the Browns roster, the projected starters according to ESPN uh, for the upcoming season. Now, highlighted are guys that the Browns drafted. And um, when you look at it, the wily veteran of, uh, of this group is Joel Batonio. He is going to be the oldest guy that the Browns have drafted that is projected as a starter. Uh, Janovich came in a trade, Beckham and Landry both in trade, super free agent signing this year along with Conklin. You see uh, Treader and Teller as well. Look over on the defense, and again, young guys are the only ones that are projected starters that have been drafted by the Browns. Garrett Noganjobi, you got uh, Wilson Takitaki, who, boy, that, that tells you your linebacking core is, is kind of thin if you're projecting him as a starter. And then the young cornerbacks, uh, Ward and Greedy Williams. Let's welcome uh, Doug Maurice, Cleveland.com columnist, back in. And Doug, uh, when you look at it, again, it just reinforces what we had talked about last segment as far as the drafting goes. Um, really, the only guy who would be on a second contract that is a starter that the Browns have drafted is Joel Batonio. And I, don't get me wrong, really good guard, but you would think it would be a little bit more than just one guy? So, I mean, I think there are a couple things that come into play with, with homegrown guys, right? I do think there are times when we can all overvalue guys that you draft, right? Because at this point, like Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham right now are making the money that they're going to make. They've been in the league long enough. They've been productive enough that this would be their salary, whether they were drafted by the Browns or whether they were drafted by someone else. You know, if, if, if Odell Beckham had been drafted by the Browns, well, then they'd be paying him what they're paying now because if they didn't, he'd, he would have left as a free agent and gone somewhere else. So the thing that I think that really matters, there's a couple things. One is you get some guys in the locker room like Petonio who know what the franchise is like. And then when you have this turnover, you have a couple building blocks. So that really is important. But I do think there's this guy, you, when you can catch younger guys and have them cheat and have them be good winning players while they're still on their rookie deals, for instance, the Browns are playing, play, paying Olivier Vernon $15 million this year. Like, is he worth that? I mean, I don't know that he's not worth it. That's a lot of money for what he is. If Carl Nassib was still here and being like a productive pass rushing defensive end for a much cheaper price at this point than Olivier Vernon then maybe you could spend the Vernon money to get an even better set. You know, it just it's all about the roster building. So what you really, if Jedrick Wills, like in two years, is playing like a, a pro bowl tackle, and it's like, man, this guy's so good. If he was in the open market right now, he'd be worth $20 million. But he's on a rookie deal, and we're getting him for less than half that. That's how you really win, right? So the continuity in the second contract is nice, but I think the difference making really happens when you have high-level guys who are on their first deals making cheap money relatively while you're spending elsewhere, and the result is you have multiple guys who are playing like $15 million players, but some of them you don't have to pay $15 million. So in the end, once you get to your second contract and you're going to be expensive no matter what, yeah, it can be hard maybe to get free agents to come to Cleveland. But I think that really the big thing is those good young players who help you win before they hit it big on the money. So you would, Nick Chubb would be a perfect example of that right now. And Baker Mayfield, assuming he rebounds like you and I both think he will, would be another one. And, and when it's a quarterback on that rookie deal, you really have to make some hay because he's going to start eating up big time money. And that's the thing, because in the end, and you're exactly right. I mean, that's why this is a winning time. And we've all been saying it. that's why we all said 12 and four last year, <laughs> because you get Baker Mayfield when they play at their optimum level. Right. Baker Mayfield, Miles Garrett, Denzel Ward, Nick Chubb are all worth more than their current contracts. And so the point isn't, boy, look at this great eight man core that's going to stay together for eight years, because if they're great they're not going to be able to pay all of them, right? And then once Nick Chubb is out there, 
he's, there's going to be a market for him. It's not going to matter who drafted him. It's going to matter. Do the Browns want to pay that money to any top tier running back? And I don't think Nick Chubb's going to give like a hometown discount to the Browns. He's just going to be worth a lot. And then the Browns in their roster building have to think about how that fits. But now is the time. And that's what's so foreign to us. When you go through a stretch of, oh, this is your winning time with Justin Gilbert, Johnny Mandel, Danny Shelton, Cam Irving, and Corey Coleman. <laughs> there, was never, there was no winning time there. But when you can build a little group of young guys, and then you have the money to supplement them with Sheldon Richardson, with Jack Conklin, with Olivier Vernon, that's how the magic happens. And it's weird. Like the magic, still, it's right now. The time for the magic to happen is right now because, again, you hope they hit on all these guys long term in the draft, but when they get expensive, they're just not as valuable for your roster. 